वेलकम बैक सो एनी क्वेरीज टिल योर ब्रेक सॉरी ओके आई वॉज ऑन म्यूट so after the year 6 version have got released we have got classes also in our javascript okay before that uh, we didn't have the actual class just the java using javascript we can mimic the concept of class okay so the basic difference between the class and object if you see in any object oriented language um so the classes are blueprint like it is a template for any object so for example okay the class name could be something like uh the same thing example like student it the structure will be same like that of the object it will also have properties and methods um the same So the properties are name and age and methods for study and play. Uh, so this is kind of a general template. Okay, it is a the class you can uh, assume it as a uh, template and it will not have any uh, real time data. It will have only the meta data. Like this student class will have name, age. and two methods and the objects are the instances of the class so instances means uh, it will have real time data so for example the object one uh, let's say the person name is dinesh so this is one object he will have his own data right uh, the class class will have only meta data the actual data will reside in the Objects only. So his name is so and so. Um, ages so and so. So the object two is Priya. So here also, ah, uh, we will have. So the you can assume the class as a plain template with no data. It will have only the skeleton of properties and methods, and. the actual data right the actual data or the actual instances uh, it will be in object so one class can have multiple objects so student is a class and there are two objects two different objects so <coughs> so it's just a blueprint of an object uh, if you see the object creation it had data we Assign the property values also, but if you see class decoration, it will be something different. So a class can have many objects. It's a prototype based object language. Prototype means it's a template only. So it's kind of uh, it will say what what kind of structure your object will have. Okay. So in EA six version, they have introduced this class keyword. So currently, we can use the class concept here. If you see, they are creating the prototype first. Okay, class space vehicle. So I told already, it will not have any real time data. So we are just defining the properties here. Ah, uh, the vehicle will have name, maker, engine properties, and the actual data is not being assigned. And we are having the method also. Okay, method as part of this template. So here only we are creating the real time objects here. So bike one equal to we are creating one instance with real time data. It's an um, <clears throat> object instantiation. I mean, object creation will be done using the new keyword. So we are creating a new object of this prototype. Okay, so this can avoid your rework because if you are directly creating object, you have to write this code twice. Okay, your code will be like uh, uh, if you are creating object directly by one equal to engine. Okay, so if there is no concept of class, let's say you have to write multiple object creations like this. So if there are, uh, let's say we have around one fifty bike instances, then the code the code will get multiplied uh, many times, right? So what they have done is they have simply created a class. um it common prototype as bike so the properties they had given so these are all the uh, 
properties that the objects are going to have name and engine so a common template is written now what we have to do is to create this two object we have to make use of the template um so bike one equal to it's a new object of type bike so as i told already every class will have constructor so the constructor will take care of all the initialization so when you create a new instance of the class this constructor will get called so we are passing three values um bike one ma maker one and the engine one so um the values will be assigned to for bike one it will create a object of this type when you use the keyword new it will create a uh, new instance of this class with these assigned values so the constructor will be called constructor when you create when you create a instance the constructor will be called and the whatever values you pass will get assigned so two objects have got created and we can just uh, call bike one dot name so it will say this first bike name and bike two dot Uh, make a, so it will print this value so that's how the class concept works so <clears throat> the main advantage of ha having classes uh, the consistency in the prototype or the format of the objects and also to avoid the number of lines of code we we used to go for the class concept there is no issue so so this kind of class keyword you can use after if your javascript version is above es6 and all so before the release of es6 we had we have to mimic we have to mimic the concept of class okay so they have written a constructor here so with the constructor name should be given as the class name and to the prototype i mean to the template right to the template we are adding one more uh, function here so some basic template is here with just only the properties and to the template we are adding one more function okay so whenever we create a new <coughs> object actually we have already seen one method right uh, creation of object using constructor this is the same method only a constructor is there and we are creating the object with the constructor name and to the constructor we can add the uh, additional methods also during the run time so this version of es6 this is how the traditional way of classes were being mimicked it's not actual class concept it's kind of a mim mimicking only so this is how you can use it in your current version i am sharing this code maybe you can quickly copy paste go through or you can make changes and like in your browser or your javascript okay, so can we move on to the next slide so the other two concepts we have seen is it's more of a theory only uh, encapsulation and inheritance okay so if you see the above example all the um you know all the functionality resides inside this get details method so we are writing it once okay the class and its functionality is written once and we can <coughs> call this method directly with the object name dot class name notation okay so we actually don't know what kind of logic is beside the get details function uh, the invoking component doesn't need to worry about the actual logic so it's kind of uh, if you have worked on api and all you may know okay they will give they will just give you the method name method to be invoked that only we need to worry of and the actual implementation and all it will reside inside the uh, class declaration so the invoking component it just need to know the actual method name and it using the object name the method name it will just invoke the method and we need not uh, bother about the actual logic present inside the method so this is called encapsulation the hiding of irrelevant or the set confidential you know the logic um, from the 
yeah from the collagen point so encapsulation is kind of um, wrapping property and function within a single unit so the class will have all the properties and methods defined and the objects will not have any uh, actual implementation or uh, yeah the object will not have any actual implementation so it's a hiding of data which means representing only the essential features only the method name we should know um every object creation need not worry about the actual uh, functional logic so that's what we call it as encapsulation so this is the key point here in encapsulation representing only the essential features and hiding the background detail okay so that's the encapsulation concept here that is one example um we have two functions called add address and get details so they both have some data logic or functional logic behind that but the invoking point doesn't need to take care of the functional logic again it just have to invoke the method name so the <clears throat> complete piece of code is hidden from the uh, object so that's what we call it as encapsulation inheritance like what we have seen in the third uh, approach right the object dot create so that will be parent and child they both will share some common properties and common methods i will show one example inheritance means um, um that will be two entities involved uh, parent and child so the properties and methods of parent can be used or overridden by the child object also here the person is the parent object so his the person object sorry the person class properties is name and its method is to string okay so the student extends person just like other other object oriented programming language this, that is the concept of inheritance skip so this is class 1 and class 2 extends the class 1 okay so the which means this student class will also have this name property and so string method also inherited by default okay so in constructor of class 2 they are calling the constructor of the class 1 so for means uh, here it refers to its parent class so student class is calling the constructor of the person class super of name means so whatever name value we pass here it will be set as the name i will once again show it in a notepad so that you will have a clear understanding uh, the base of parent class is person he has property called name and one method called to string so the student extends the person which means the same property and same method will be available for the student class also okay so when you are creating a student object we used to use constructor right so it will be like variable student1 equal to i am instantiating this student class new time will invoke the constructor right so the constructor is constructor of name comma id so what it will do is super of name first line it will invoke is super of name which means it will call the constructor of the parent so the constructor of the parent will set the name property as whatever value the user passes and this is the um, additional property the child has you see this dot id equal to id so the parent didn't have the child so the parent didn't have the id property but the student is having one other addition property called id so this dot id equal to whatever value the set for so this is only when you are inheriting a parent object the child has some additional properties also okay so initial values are set and we are calling the to string here to string method so it is calling the parents to string method the parents to string method will this string 
name of person is also assisting concatenation followed by this output will be name of person equal to the person's name so this piece of information is being gathered from parents method and in addition to that the additional information the child specific information id is gathered from the um, child uh, class so which means the child class can use both the uh, properties and functions of the parent object so that's what the inheritance is trying to achieve i'm sharing this code uh, but we'll not spend time here Any queries on this inheritance? Okay, we can proceed. We have shared the code for inheritance, uh, which has a uh, class definition for parent object and child object you can just try executing when you have time so we, we are moving on to the next uh, um next topic it is javascript conditionals so in some cases uh, there are uh, certain pieces of code which needs to be executed only on certain conditions it shouldn't be executed in at all scenarios so in that case we have the option to bypass the code okay so there are uh, some statements like if if else statement which statement and that okay so uh, the common the, the commonly used conditionals are some exercises and some exercises so one is if and other one is if else there one is if else if there one is which so i'll just walk you through the uh, slides here and we will have a hands on after the, all the four conditions first one is if else statement so when the so you have to mention the condition here so the condition will have uh, one operator and two values so the two values will be checked so if the age is greater than 80 what is the action item we have to do and if the else block means it is the um yeah it is the other scenario when this condition passes this will be executed when the condition fails this piece of code will be executed okay so comparison operators like greater than uh, less than equal to not equal to so this is greater than or equal to okay which means 18 or above can you do some exercises you will get clear understanding so as of now it's a basic theory only um, when the condition passes uh, the piece of code to be done when the condition fails uh, the piece of code to be executed so this is the if else block we used to have and again if else if condition is there so which means uh if the age is in this case um, if the age is less than 80 mm -hmm. this piece of code to be executed or there is there is again there are two other checks okay the age is in the range of 18 to 20 there is one block else 
okay so the other scenario the third scenario with the help of if else you will not be able to have three scenarios there is uh, there can be only two scenarios one is greater than 18 and other one is less than 18 so <clears throat> here uh, if you want to have more than two categories we go for um, if else if statement so when there are multiple if else if statements let's say uh, for example If the variable yes, you have to print the uh, you know the number of day of the week. So the code would be like if yes today. Equal to equal to so. So if you want to print the uh, you know the number of day of the week, um, you have to write these many if cases. Uh, so it will become you know the it will become clumsy to read, and there are multiple if statements also. So uh, JavaScript has an option of uh, writing a switch block. So in switch block, uh, you will have an entry entry point, right? So day. So here you will have multiple cases. So this is the entry point, and there will be multiple cases. Okay. So when there are multiple conditions to be alternate conditions to be checked, we go for um, switch case. So the entry point is based on the um, day value so when the day value ma matches monday this piece of code will get executed um in the day value matches tuesday this piece of code will get executed and we have to include the break statement so that it will break from the the uh, the loop will stop executing from this line itself else if you are not giving break statement all the cases will get executed and will get all the outputs like 1 2 3 4 5 um so you have to include your break statement here so this is kind of a simple logic to understand so when there are only two conditions use if else block when there are more than two use if else if block and when there are very large number of cases to be checked like this Which block? Okay, so I am giving you two scenarios. Uh, you can try it in your console. Here is. First scenario is um find whether a given year is leap year or not. Uh, so you have to. Use if else block here and print whether it is a leap year or not for the first scenario. For switch block, like what we have done for day of the week, ah, uh, you have to accept the month name as input and use switch block and display for Jan one for January two for February. So two two exercise for this conditional snap. Find out whether the given year is leap year or not. And based on the uh, month where month value, we have to print whether it's the first month or second month. Can you try it in your console? Okay, so we can move on to the next uh, next topic. It is scope. Okay, scope in the JavaScript means uh, it is the visibility or availability of variables. Okay, so. There are three types of scopes here. So before that, why the scope has to be considered? I will tell you some examples. Opening this console. Let's say I'm having one function. Function definition. Creating a new variable here. Uh, I have written a function here where I am trying to add two numbers and save the um, value here in a variable, and I am trying to print that variable. 
So let's see how the browser reacts here. So it's saying the sum is not defined because the sum was defined inside the function and uh, uh, outside the function, the browser couldn't read the, uh, sorry, uh, and outside the function, the browser couldn't read the sum value. So this is where the concept of scope comes in. So if you have to read some value outside the function, then it has to be declared outside the function. So there are certain consider considerations you have when you want to have access the um, variables outside the function or some somewhere in other function. So we have three levels of scope. So first one is block level scope. The second one is function level scope. Global level scope. So the block level scope means uh, it will not be any, <clears throat> uh, it, will, it will be something like, this is kind of a block. It's a grouping of uh, code only. So, so there are three types of variable. So if you have came across uh, some scenarios, so in some places we have used variable keyword to declare a variable. And in some cases, we have used constant keyword. Okay, so there are three ways in which you can uh, declare a variable. So one is variable, three keywords: variable, let, and constant. Okay, so let and constant were introduced recently only after ES six uh, release only. Before that, we had only variable. After ES6 release, we have got three types of keywords for variable declarations. So the let and constant will have block level scope. Initially, it will be tough for you to remember, but after you get some hands on, you will get to you know use with this. So let and constant. Um, will have block levels, variable will not have block levels. So what does it mean uh, if something is having block level scope, which means its lifetime is inside the block level only. Scope means its availability or lifetime. Okay. So let's say there is one block at A equal to 10, constant B equal to 20 variable c equal to 30. So I have declared three types of variables here. So as I told already, let and constants lifetime is inside block only. So if I print those uh, let and constant values here, variable also I'm trying to print inside the block. So we'll see how it works in browser. So I'm able to print all the three values because let and constant will have its li lifetime inside their block. So inside block, I'm trying to print all those values and I'm able to print it without any error. But when it comes outside of the block, the variables let and constant will not be available. Only the variable will be available. So variable is not restricted to block if you See here, I have mentioned that variable is not restricted to block level scope. We will try printing all the three values outside the block now. So the A is not defined, which means uh, the browser couldn't recognize the A because it was defined inside a block. So I will remove the statement. Let is not available outside the block. Okay, so let us having only block level scope. So the constant B is also not available outside the block. So, this. so let and constant are not available outside. So now I'm able to print the C. So that's how the, it works. And we have seen block level scope, right? And next comes the function level scope. Instead of block, we can have some function. There are three types of variables declared. So here I will make note of it. 
all three variables have function level scope only variable let and constant which means variables declared the access object so the same thing so i am declaring uh, three variables here and i am trying to check all the three values inside a function I have to invoke that function, right? Uh, function will not be executed uh, by its default. I am invoking that function. So this is the function invocation, right? The function name and the open bracket and closing bracket. So the function has got executed, and I am able to see all the three values now. If I try to access all the three values outside the function. So A is not defined. So this let cannot be accessed outside the function. B is also not available. Now it is working fine, right? So all the three will not be accessible outside. So all three will have a function level scope only. All three will have function level scope only, and uh, it will not be accessible outside. So I have. Noted that. Other one is global. Scope. Global scope means it will be accessible everywhere inside your program. Okay, so for example, you are having three variables. Okay, I am just doing the clear catching here. We are having three variables which are not uh, declared inside any block or function. Okay, it's not constrained to any block or function, and I am trying to use those three values inside a function. So the variable declarations are not constrained to any um, function or block, and I am trying to access it from function and block, and which means from anywhere anywhere inside the program we can access. That's what we are trying to test. In the function, let's see those statements. So these three variables, as it is not defined inside any function, and it is declared globally. Globally means ah, uh, uh, not under any block. So it is available. It can be available. It is available uh, from anywhere in the. So it is having the global availability. It can be uh, accessed from anywhere. Have global scope. So let and constant will have block scope. So whatever uh, let and constant variables declared inside a block, it will be accessible only from the block. i have taken same thing uh, okay same example here block level scope let and constant only have block level scope so variables declared inside a block cannot be accessed from outside the block so the for function scope the variable declared inside a function can be accessed only inside the function if you try to print this car name outside you will get an error so global means it is not declared inside any uh, block or function okay just we'll try to have some simple example now mm, simple exercise now uh, you can try uh, you know implementing the function level scope with three different variables like how we have tried some three different variables 
like variable let and constant has to be declared inside the function and try to access it outside the function any three variables so that you will remember it for a long time so three function variables you have to create one of type let one of type constant and one of type variable and try to access it outside the function okay so we'll move on to the next one this is the concept of arrays so arrays right uh, so so far we have seen variable let uh, um variable let constant uh, and they were having simply one value right either it could be a text or number it could be a name or age or number something like that but uh, we have a special data type called data structure called array so it will have it can have uh, more than one value under a single object uh, under a single variable name so let's say uh, you have to refer all the days of the week okay so uh, the traditional way like so for whatever we have seen it would be like variable day 1 equal to sunday variable day 2 equal to how uh, we assign values to the variables right but arrays can have all the values clubbed together under one variable name okay so it will be like how we we need to declare is like variable is array equal to the arrays should be uh, the array values should be written in a square bracket notation so the values should be separated by comma so the square bracket me means that it is a value of <coughs> it's a array of values so the values should be separated by comma so it will be like sunday monday comma tuesday okay. so this is how you declare a array and you can access the array elements right uh, using index so the array index starts from 0 so it is array element 0 array element 1 array element 2 3 so in all programming languages the array element starts with 0 only so if you want to access the value of wednesday what you have to write is if you remember the object notation right uh, if you if you have to access any object property how you write object name dot the property name so uh, for object you have uh, written like um byte one dot manufacturer so that's how you have uh, uh, access the property of the object right but here uh, in array you have to use again the square bracket notation only so if you have to access wednesday Uh, how you have to write is array name and here index number so the array name is days array and the index is 3 so when i write console dot log of days array of 3 it will print wednesday when i write console dot days array of 4 it will return thursday so this is how you have to access the elements so Uh, first thing we have seen is array declaration and initialization okay so this can be done in other way also this is uh, using the square bracket notation right uh, like how you define a new object the same way you can declare this also array equal to you can use this new array keyword also So this is other way of declaring and initializing an array. So the uh, the first thing is declaration. The second one is accessing element. So to access element, this is the format you have to use. So array name, square bracket, index uh, number. So if you use Direction 
அதையோ ஒன் இட் வில் பிரிண்ட் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் இண்டெக்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஜீரோ இண்டெக்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஒன் ஸோ ஐ வில் கெட் தி வேல்யூஸ் ஸோ how you should access the array elements so um like any object any object uh, one other thing i forget to mention this array is more or less similar to object only because let's say uh, i am having one array and i am trying to print the type of it okay console the law it will say it is a object only it will behave as a object only so like any object have properties and methods this array will also have properties and methods some example could be the any pro there is a property called length for the array so the method could be sort okay Mm, so let's say i am having a uh, some number array okay. number array equal to 2 comma 1 comma 2 comma 5 comma so i can write console dot law to get the length length means number of elements in the array to sort it we can invoke a this is how we uh, access the arrays of uh, sorry objects property and method right object name comma property name so object name comma method name see how it works in browser so first we try to print the number of elements in the array so the length of the array so it has printed 5 so then we have call sort method on this array so all the elements it has sorted 1 2 3 4 5 in the ascending order so, we have seen this array properties and methods accessing element and the type of is object and array elements we have seen type of array elements and sort methods we have seen looping through array elements and add the element to array so initially you have declared one array with five different set of values and during run time you are supposed to add some other new values so how will you be adding elements to the array at run time we have a method called push so you using push method you will be able to add new elements to the array so we will take the same example So to invoke a method, we use object name dot function name, right? Object name dot function name. So I'm putting the object name dot method name. The argument is the value to be pushed. One other element. I will try to print the new array. Yes. Yeah, so initially, you had only five values. and now 6 and 7 have got added so this is how you should push any new element to the array we have a loop called for loop okay so this we will see it uh, at last because we haven't seen loops right so this is what uh, uh, we have so far till now on array we'll just have an exercise on it okay mm. Okay, what you can do is so we have seen push right so the same way you try to remove some element from the array okay. 
uh, you have to google for the method available so you have to find uh, the relevant method to remove any element from array uh, so you have a array with these five values and try to remove uh, some element like let's say you i want to remove this uh, number of rows from the array so can you try this we'll move on to the next topic so loops so loops means uh, when there are more uh, i mean it's kind of uh, executing the same piece of code again and again with different set of values okay so usually uh, we used to apply loops uh, when we are processing array or yeah mostly we use uh, Uh, loops when we are processing array or objects okay so there are four different types of loops for loop while loop do while loop and for in for in loop so for loop and while loop will be similar and do while is also kind of similar with the slight variation so we will see one example right uh, we need to tell them uh, tell the browser that how many times this piece of code so the syntax of for loop is the initialization how many times it should run no sorry the initial value of the iterator variable this is this we call it as iterator variable and this variable will one and this variable will only decide on the number of times of execution of this loop and when to stop this okay so the first one is initialization the other one is condition check the third one is increment increment or change in value so I, if we see it as an example you will know let's say with the with this array we will i will try to show the for loop execution okay so we have an array there are seven elements to be processed right so we will start we will write a for loop like you want to print element by element okay so if you write it in a normal way if you have to print every element how would you write the code the same code so if you will be writing loop your code would be like this so to print every value will be printing uh, the days of array so days array of zero sunday so days array of Mon monday so it is printing but this can be this kind of uh, repetitive code can be avoided by loop so the loop will have a common set of code common set of code inside the loop so if you see the common statement in every uh, statement is the common logic in every statement is it is console dot log it is going to get executed with one input data where only this number will vary so this is where your variation will be so let's say it is x so here the x will have values from 0 to 6 so for the first time it will be 0 and during the last time it will be 6 so we have to execute this statement with a uh, value for x varying so we have to dynamically assign the values right so we have to tell the browser that start the value from x so the initialization so the initial value is 0 okay and execute till the x value is less than 7 so till it is 6 we have to execute so this is the condition it should pass so when this condition pass then only this um, statement will get executed and the third condition is to make this vary variation happen so for the first time it should be 0 for the next time it should be 1 and for the next time it should be to add one number to it okay i'm telling the browser that start from the number 0 and on the next time execute the statement with this value so x will be next for the next time it is one and execute this block of code till this condition is getting satisfied so how it will be uh, executing is 
for the first time x equal to zero. The condition gets passed, so it will execute this statement. The same way x equal to one. So it the condition is getting passed, it will execute this statement. So till x equal to five, x equal to six, it will pass, and it will print uh, the values. When x comes to seven, uh, the value will become false. The condition will become false. And the loop will break. Okay, so we'll see how this code works. Okay, so the seven to eight lines of code can be written in one or two lines. When we when we know that it has some common piece of code and there is some a minor variation. Okay, so this is how the for loop works. While loop is also same here. The syntax is a bit different. That so while we have to give the condition till when we should execute this loop. So in initial initialization should be done outside the while loop. You have to remember the so initialization should be done outside, and the condition should be given in the while statement. And the increment should be done inside the while step. Same three set of uh, you know the configuration you have to do. So initialization outside, condition check in the uh, while statement, and the increment inside the while block. Okay. So now we will try to execute this while while block. We are getting the same output. R and while they they serves the same purpose only. Only the um, you know the syntax is different. So the third one is do while. So it is also just similar to your for and do while only, but the small differences. Um, the block will get executed at least once. Okay. So I have some example. We have a keyword called do, which means there is no condition check. I uh, explicitly uh, do the statement. Okay, once so for the first time, it will execute these two statements, and after executing, it will come to check the while condition. Okay, which means here check the condition and execute the code. But in do while execute the code first and then check the condition. Okay, so this piece of code will get executed and after execution it is checking whether to proceed or not. So if this condition is matches, it will proceed to the block again. If the condition fails, it will break. So here the main difference is execute the code at least once. And check the condition after. But if you see for loop and while loop, the condition will be checked initially, and only when the condition matches, your piece of code will get executed. But here, this piece of code will get executed at least once, and then only the condition will be checked, and it will decide whether to proceed with the next loop or not. Okay. So we'll run this code in the console. So I is initialized to twenty one, and this piece of code will be executed and till twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. The condition matches and it is executed again and again. So let's say you are having some invalid, I mean some value greater than this twenty five. Okay, let's say I equal to twenty eight, but still this piece of code will run because. On the first time it will run, and the next time it will be twenty nine, and it will the condition will fail and it will stop. You see.
though the i value is 28 it is not checking any condition and it is executing for the first thing so <clears throat> that's the difference between do do while while loop so the next loop is for in loop so this is mainly used uh, when we are uh, iterating through any object so i'll take this example for in loop so first is for loop while loop do while loop and the fourth one is for in loop so here the syntax would be like for Element in. Okay, so uh, this is how your browser understands this code for every element in the given object. Execute this piece of code. So the object is person here. The person is having three different attributes: first name, last name, and age. so this x will have first name for the first time uh, so how it will work is for the first time the x value is first name then second time the x value is last name and for the third time text values age uh for the first time it will print person of x which means person of first name it will print john in property name for every element in this object okay so this object we have uh, de declared already this x it is a key only key means uh, in this name value pair it's a property name so when i am running this code problem it was uh, cat so we had to give the proper uh, keyword here i'm copying and pasting this code again you see the output it is iterating through the person object and for every property so the the property name is stored in x so i am printing the property name it is saying first name and the property value it is saying the first name actual name john and when it comes to the next time it is printing the second property name and second property value so this for in loop is uh, mainly used to iterate through all the properties of the object okay so we have seen all the four uh, types of this loop so we'll have just one simple example uh, let's say the same example we will take for your exercise also so you have to declare a number array okay so okay so the your uh, exercise is to declare a number array which will have values from 1 to 
you have to iterate through this array either through for loop or while loop and if it is divisible by 3 you have to do a console dot log statement okay so you have to iterate through for loop let's say for example if the current number is divisible by 3 then you have to do console dot log statement so this is your exercise can you start doing that and confirm once it is done and share me code also if it is working we have callbacks and uh, promises pending so we will uh, there is only one program available as example for both i am picking one so callbacks so callback means uh, it is a function one function related to another function so when one function execution is complete we need to let's say uh, function one is complete then we need to execute function two um so in that case we used to go for callback okay so in most of the cases in client server communication right uh, um we used to send the request to the server and we will wait for response from the server once we get the response then we have to pass the response and based on the response we make some changes in ui so if you see uh, the server ap call right uh, sorry the server hit right so the step one will be send request to server and Respond from server. So this is step one. Once this is done, then only we will be able to proceed with passing of response, right? So once we receive response from the server, then only we will be able to pass the response and display it in UI. Okay. So in the same way, let's say we have a uh, some calculation. So it is let's say addition of two numbers. So we have to uh, do addition of two numbers. Once it is done, then only we will be able to display the sum value, right? So these two things cannot happen in parallel. So once the step one is complete, then only we will be able to do the step two. Okay. So what they have done is they they will be segregating these two things into two functions. So first one is function add. We will have two variables. One is instead of passing it dynamically, uh, we will have it as static one. It will be sum equal to zero. N plus N T. So once this is done, then only we should be doing the uh, next function display rate function. A result. Of sum. So the order of execution would be add. Callback. Okay, this is a normal method of execution. See like how it is behaving in console. So if you see, uh, the add function is called first. The sum value is obtained, and the display result is called. We are displaying the sum. Okay, so if this piece of code, uh, this addition logic is very simple. So we have called uh, one after other and it worked without any issue. Let's say uh, this addition is a very complex logic. Very complex logic which will 
will take time and minutes okay so in this case if you run this okay you will get the uh, wrong result because this function itself will take more time to run you will not get the proper result before it uh, before it completes it running uh, this function will be called i can show you that also so i am just explicitly adding some delay okay set time out so the set time out right it will explicitly add the delay of 5000 milliseconds uh, which means 5 seconds after 5 seconds only this piece of code will get executed so when you get time you can just make note of this default function set time out so you can go through it so this set time out will explicitly add some delay after this 5 seconds delay only this calculation will happen so when we call this add function first uh, this will run and after 5 seconds only this calculation will happen and when you uh, call display result it will display zero only so you have got the very old value right because the add is called and uh, it will the uh, after 5 seconds only this addition will happen before that we are calling this display result so we are getting the very older value so that's why what they have came up with is uh, callback function so callback how it will work is will not call the functions one after other we blindly will not call one after other so once this is complete then only will be calling the second function so that's why the concept of call back came in let's see so here uh, this is the uh, concept of call back okay so even the set time out what we have seen there right, that is also a concept of call back i will take that and i will explain that also okay so here um after the set time out function is complete then only this uh, function will happen right so i told right first there will be 5000 seconds of sorry 5000 milliseconds that is 5 seconds of delay after that your addition will take addition will take once this function the timeout function is complete uh, whatever code we have in this function will be executed in the same way in the set interval right here also the same thing so once for every 5000 seconds for every 5000 seconds this method will get executed i will show it in you i will get a clear idea so the time is 48 seconds now right it will get refreshed so it is 53 um now it is 58 so we are setting time interval so for every 5 seconds this function should get executed so this function will display the current time here okay so it is a example of callback so one function having other function as the argument so which means once the function 1 is completed this function 2 will be executed so it will wait for 5 seconds to be completed once 5 seconds is elapsed then only this function 2 will be called so this is how the callbacks will i can show you one other example also i don't i don't have time to type it and show you an example of your callbacks so the same example what i have told you right uh, after addition only we should be displaying the print uh, the addition value the sum value so the same thing they have done it here
function 1. This will calculate the sum of values. And this is your function 2. It will display the value in the UI. Okay. So, uh, function 2 should be executed only after the function 1 gets complete. So, we are passing the as the input. Once the function 1 is complete, okay, once the calculation function is complete, we need to call the display function. So, here we are calling uh, the function 1 with two actual numbers and the function 2 name. So, once this operation is complete, then only our uh, my display function will be called. So, your execution will be like my calculator will be called. The addition will be carried out. So, sum will be calculated. Then, the callback function is called. Your callback function is my display. No? So, this is how your callback function is. So, one function is passed this argument to other function. I am sharing you this link. When you get time, you can go. The set interval also I have the code. I am sharing with you. Yeah, so, there is only one other topic pending promise. It is same like callback only. I am sharing this slide with Anand and he will be sharing it with you. So, again, there are two slides and I have shared some reference links also. You can go through it and uh, you can reach out to me if you have any queries on this promise session. So, the callbacks also I have shared the code and links. So, we can wind up the session for today. Thank you.